Coming from Enugu and Oka, we were weeping the kind of road we drove along until we came into the United States. Mr. Governor, congratulations. I don't know whether it's a federal road or a state road. If our leaders love us, whether it is federal or state, that road should not be in that shape between Owere and River State. If our leaders love us, like Melee said, they won't let our children study in an environment where you cannot even teach pigs. And even the curriculum they are studying, what are the children learning? I understand, apart from alternative to practical, they also have taken history out of the classroom. How can you train children who don't know where they are coming from? What are we afraid of not teaching history? I understand there's a film now on the uh, on Biafra war here, which cannot be shown in Nigeria, because nobody wants us to know about our history. If we don't teach history and tell people where we are coming from, in the next 20 years, we will not remember Boko Haram, we won't remember Maitasine, we won't remember anything. So curriculum, apart from the environment, also matters in what the children are learning. If our leaders love us, they won't inflict on us bad uh, commissioners, bad ministers. They will find the political will to dismiss those who are corrupting the system. If our leaders love us, there are so many things they will do. All the issues we are raising here now. Uh, Mr. Kushner told us that Africa is rising. Nigeria is rising. Things are getting better. And according to him, there is a lot of competition in the world today for the resources of Africa. If our leaders love us, will they allow foreigners who are competing to benefit from our resources more than our, ourselves who own the resources? But what we see here every day, people from outside Nigeria, Americans, British people, are gaining more from our resources than our Nigerians are gaining. We are not enjoying the resources, not yet, not everywhere. And outsiders are scrambling for those resources and getting the lion's share. If our leaders love us, there are so many things they will do for us. So for me, everything we are going to say here today, all of them are things you already have heard several times. You already know all the challenges in Nigeria today about security, about black community, about ethnicism, about religious bigotry, everything you already know. I summarize, our leaders must find the political will to love those they are governing. I won't say more than themselves. I won't say as much as themselves. A little bit, a little love from all the governors, from all the uh, um, members of the assembly and everywhere. And uh, you were in the House of Assembly, or was it Senate? House of Assembly. National Assembly. How much are your colleagues being paid there? How much are senators paid? If you love us, we won't take as much as they are paying you. Honestly. And those who are there, once they have taken the money, their tongues are so tied, they won't make good laws. If okay. they love us at the Senate, at the House of Assembly, at the House of Representatives, they will make good laws to get what are doing okay. here. So for me, I won't go on speaking because as I said earlier, Thank you. as I said earlier, all the things we are saying here are not new things. Is there anything that I've said here I don't know? Is there anything you don't know? Don't you know participation? Don't you know inclusion? Don't you know carrying along? You know all these things. Uh, thank you. Please put thank our you, voices madam. together and thank urge you. our leaders to love us a little more and things will get on well. Thank, thank you and God bless all of you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Looks like the audience is very excited now. Uh, well, uh, Professor Kuna has uh, drawn our attention to a number of issues, but she started with trying to remind us about the gender aspect of um, uh, what we are doing. We must have to, in a democracy, try as much as possible to include women to participate in everything we do. Anyway, we still have one more discussant, and uh, I think he is a lawyer. Probably the legal dimension of this matter 
will come up now. We'll invite Professor George Amadi. I hope I'm right. To join the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Medreto. Mr. Chairman, Your Excellencies, Governor and First Lady, all other protocols observed. Well, with due respect to the speakers, Pat Utomi and Bernard Krishna, and with due respect to my fellow discussants, the problem I have is I have a problem of a teacher. Teachers in this country are not all that recognized. Now, that is the problem of democracy. However, as a teacher, I will try to do some analysis about this issue of democracy and good governance. Part of Tommy told us about the issues involved. Krishna told us about the challenges we are having. Let me start, therefore, by saying that the fundamental principle of democracy is the rule of law. That's the fundamental principle. Without it, there will be no democracy. And within this rule of law, there are further principles. As the principle of democracy is one, inclusiveness, which means that every member of the electorate should be allowed to vote according to his or her conscience, without any intimidation or anything whatever, so that he or she will be in the position to elect somebody that will do the good governance. The other one is the issue of transparency. That the electoral process should be transparent in such a way that it will be free, fair, and credible. Otherwise, there is nothing like democracy. And thirdly, there should be a secrecy. In other words, if the member of the electorate is voting, there must be some secrecy to enable him to exercise his free mind in a way that he or she should vote. These are principles of democracy which we must observe if we want to come to that. Now, the question then is, how do we put people in governance in order to give us pure democracy and good governance? And the person we put there is not a person, is not an angel, is not a god, is but a human being. And we usually call these people politicians. Who is a politician? That's the question I ask to politicians and to all of us. Who is a politician? The Concise English Dictionary defines politician two meanings, two meanings of politicians. The first meaning is that a politician is somebody elected into a public office or somebody appointed into that public office. That's the first meaning. The edition did not go further than that to describe what are these, which I know if you start talking on it, it will take volumes. The second meaning, which should interest you and I, is that a politician is somebody who is deceitful and manipulative in order to gain advancement. Note that a politician is somebody who is deceitful and manipulative in order to get advancement. So where do our politicians belong? The first one or the second one? Or both? Then, who makes it possible? If he says the second one, who makes it possible for this person to be elected into an office? It is you and I, the electorate. But the question is, does, is there any enabling environment for us to elect somebody who is not manipulative and deceitful in order to gain advancement. So that is the issue. And that is what we have to address in this process of democracy. Now, in order to get this person, the person we are going to elect, who is going to be in this position of power and authority, is a person who is God-fearing. In this country, we are so religious. And therefore, we must elect somebody who is God-fearing. Second, the person who is human-loving. And thirdly, the person who is law-abiding. If you get this person in office, 
there'll be good governance. 